Hi, I'm Mike Mullen, and this is my book, Ash Fall, and the sequel, Ash and Winter. And the invisible book in my invisible third hand is called Sunrise, and that's the third book of the Ash Fall trilogy. It's actually not invisible, it just won't come out until uh, March 17th, 2014. So, uh, my book, Ash Fall, the first book, the one you should read first, is about a teenager struggling to survive and find his family after the Yellowstone supervolcano erupts and plunges the world into this horrible natural disaster, the worst natural disaster in recorded human history. Now, I had the idea for this uh, perfectly horrible disaster and this perfectly wonderful, I hope you'll agree, book uh, when I was walking through Central Library in downtown Indianapolis. And I, this was about five years ago, and I saw this book on display. This is Bill Bryson's A Short History of Nearly Everything. And uh, I'm kind of a history nut. I've got a whole shelf full of history books uh, downstairs. And so I, I took a look at this, and it's a short history of nearly everything. And I thought, no way! That cannot be a short history of nearly everything. I mean, this book's huge. It's like 600 pages. But I've got books downstairs, histories of the Revolutionary War alone, that are 1,200 pages. He had to have missed stuff. So I checked this book out from my library because I was going to write Bill Bryson a snarky letter about everything he missed in his book. But you, you can do that now, you know. You can write snarky letters to authors. I know, because I get some. But it turns out that this book is not a history book like history class. This book is a geological history of the Earth. And here in the middle, there's a couple chapters about the Yellowstone supervolcano. And uh, <clears throat> so when I read that, I thought, aha! I've always loved disaster fiction. I've always wanted to write a disaster novel. But it seemed like all the good disasters were taken. There are great books about tornadoes, about earthquakes, about fires, about floods. But here was a disaster nobody had ever written about, the Yellowstone supervolcano. So I thought, oh, I'll write that book. And I did. And the result is Ashfall. Now there are other books set after the, uh, the uh, <coughs> eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano, but mine was the first by a month, and it's the best. But don't tell Ter Harry Turtle that I said so. Uh, <coughs> so um, anyway... I thought you might like to be hear a little bit of it, just to hear a little bit about what it's about and uh, see if you might like to read it. Here's a section that starts on page four. There was a rumble, almost too low to hear, and the house shook a little. An earthquake, maybe, although we never have earthquakes in Iowa. The power went out. I stood to open the curtains. I thought there might be enough light to read by, at least for a while. Then it happened. I heard a cracking sound, like the sound the hackberry tree in my backyard had made when Dad cut it down last year, but louder! A whole forest of hackberries breaking together. The floor tilted, and I fell across the suddenly angled room, my arms and legs flailing. I screamed, but couldn't hear myself over the noise. A boom, and then a whistling sound. Incoming artillery from a war movie, but played in reverse. My back hit the wall on the far side of the room, and the desk slid across the floor toward me. I ducked, wrapping myself into a ball, hands over the back of my neck, praying my desk would not crush me. It rolled, painfully clipped my right shoulder, and came to rest above me, forming a small triangular space between the floor and the wall. I heard another crash, and everything shook violently for a moment. I'd seen those stupid movies where the hero gets tossed around like a rag doll and springs up unhurt and ready to fight off the bad guys. If I were the star in one of those, I suppose I would have jumped up, thrown my desk aside, and leapt to battle whatever malevolent god had struck my house. I hate to disappoint, but I just lay there, curled in a ball, shaking pure terror. It was too dark under the desk to see anything beyond my quivering knees, nor could I hear the noise of those few violent seconds that left my ears ringing loudly enough to drown out a marching band if one had been passing by. Plaster dust choked the air, and I fought back a sneeze. I lay in that triangular cave for a minute, maybe longer. My body mostly quit shaking, and the ring in my ears began to fade. I poked my right shoulder gingerly. It felt swollen, and touching it hurt. I could move the arm a little, though, so I figured it wasn't broken. I might have lain there longer, checking my injuries, but I smelled something burning. So Alex is trapped in his house. His house just fell on his head, and the house is on fire. And that's just the first chapter. Read the rest only if you're exceptionally brave and daring. Thank you all very much.